Hello everybody, welcome to Idle Game Chat. This is Dimp Digital's weekly video games podcast. You've got myself, Apps, here, running the operations for this week. And I'm joined by Mr. Mark Smith-Biff. Biff, how you doing, mate? Yeah, very well, thank you. Very well. Not ill? Not ill, no. Finally starting to clear it out of the uh, Essex area. Yeah, I'm feeling much better. So hopefully the, the quality of this particular podcast would increase. Although having you on... It's a bit of a lucky dip as to whether you turn up and produce, isn't it? Because sometimes you can be a bit down on things and, and really wreck people's lives for the week, put them off. They turn it, they turn it on first thing Monday, got to go to work, and they hear you moaning. They think, "Fucking hell, might as well, well end it." You know, I'll take like it is. That's how I like to think. <laughs> well, it sounds like what Logan would say. So maybe you are closer related than you think. But <laughs> Don't say. <that>. <laughs> we do have a good subject to, to be chatting about. Something that could be one of the biggest changes or not necessarily a change one of the newest and most innovative things to come in game for a long time it's virtual bloody reality now biff has gone out and purchased one of these and he's gone and got the playstation vr headset to go along with his current playstation 4 so we're going to talk about that let's just go through the thing chronologically let's just start from the beginning and work our way through and we'll get to the games and get to the overall experience towards the end so this thing Oh, actually, not this thing turns up. You've got to pay for it somehow or another. How much did you have to fork out for the PlayStation VR in the end to make sure that it could get to your living room and it had things like the camera, which was a necessity but wasn't bundled in with, with the first few bundles? I believe that was 400 for the VR headset and the camera. Okay. And then I also bought two motion controllers and chargers, which also got released... It's like a bundle package they did that also got released on the day of the headset coming out, and they were £79. That's for so both, yeah. Yep, and that's, that's £479 and that's for two controllers. Lot. Yeah, that's everything in, but that doesn't include a game. No, no, it doesn't include a game. Of course it doesn't. So that's that, £479. And the motion controls you don't have to have, but for some games it really it makes, yeah, it, makes it a lot better, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. recommendation is to get all of that really... Um, otherwise you could be selling yourself a little bit short on some of the games especially ones where you're actually using your two hands in the game because with the controller I can't imagine that would work very well um, so that's it that's that's been paid for that's that's money out of the bank you won't get that back now you do realise that it's not a, this is not a trial period you've got your sweaty head on it that's it it's, the warranty's gone and uh, it arrives on your doorstep on Thursday on release day I imagine that you're like a a school kid there waiting to open his like Christmas present like excited for the first time in your life maybe I don't know if you feel excitement ever but you know <laughs> you, you, you go you go and unbox the bastard how's it easy to set, is it easy to set up or not because I've read it is if you know what you're doing if you know about wires and where to put them but some people say it's a fucking nightmare there's too many wires extra units tell it like it is like you said you would what are we looking at here to try and set this PlayStation VR up it's not. It's not overly complicated. It's right. just there is just a lot of a lot of wires. Right. Um, so you have to just briefly. You get an extra box which yep. goes next to your PlayStation. Like you a processing HDMI. unit, is it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, like a little processing unit. Um, you have an HDMI cable going to the back of that, and goes into the back of your PlayStation. Right. And then the HDMI cable from your telly then goes back into the little box, and then you plug two wires in to the box that goes out and then you plug two wires into those two wires that connect to your headset right okay that's, that's basically it and do they supply all the wires there where you didn't have to bugger about getting any extra hdmi no cables? no as long as if your playstation works on your telly then they provide everything you need they give you an extra hdmi cable they give you all the wires uh yeah it's, it's not too bad but okay and then a lot of wires. and then the camera that's just one cable into the back isn't it of the, of the yeah. playstation you've got to find yeah, a place for it on the telly somewhere yeah, yeah, that's just a cable that plugs into the back. And also the, the little unit, that needs power, so that has to plug into the back. That is to plug into a plug socket as well. Ah, so that little processing box, that little extra box that we, I've, I've seen when I, when I came around, that needs to go into a main socket as well. Yeah, it does, yeah. Okay, there we go. A- aesthetically, how does it look in your living room now you've got it set up? Is it a, a mesh of wires and, and shit everywhere, or, it, or can it quite nicely sort of snug in either on top of the PlayStation or alongside it? 
it has the. It, there's also another wire that closes into the back of the process. Fucking hell! You, I'm and, working all sorts of wires here. And that has to plug into the USB port at the front. Right, so, so it's there's be always quite a wire. Yeah, there's always a wire that comes out and that sits on the top. But it don't look too bad. No. It's only when the PS VR headset's plugged in, you've got a metre and a half of cable <laughs> running through the centre of your lounge. For the headset. Connected to your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a bit of a pain. Yeah. But like I say, it unplugs and then you can put it away somewhere and then when you want to get it out, yeah. plug it back in, then you've got your metre and a half of cable floating about. Yeah. So was it how long did it take you to settle this up? Was there, were there clear instructions on how to do it or did you just sort of wing it and get it done and you're, you're happy with it? No, let's clear this. There's like basically numbered instructions. It says pick wire number one, and then there's a bag with a wire in it that says number one, and it tells you where to put it. It's, it's really, it took me about 10 minutes, but it's just a lot of wires. It's just a little bit fiddly. Like if you look at the back of my telly, if I have to change a cable, I'm fucked because there's no, I'm going to have to retrace my steps for everything because it's just an absolute spaghetti junction back there. And that's because of the VR, or is that just in general? Is too much well, shit there as well. That's just in general, but the VR ain't helping with an extra four wires. <laughs> no, it won't, will it? It absolutely won't itself. So you got it all plugged in. You got your meter and a half worth of cable <laughs> attached to you, or you're going to put it to your head. The headset itself, how easy is it to adjust, put on, take off? You know, because it's one of those weird things that I find that when you when we went to EGX, someone did all that for us. They kind of grabbed the unit, put it on your head. And then took it off your head, so you didn't have to fuck about trying to find everything. But now you were sitting there on your own, you're panicking. It's Thursday, you want to play it, and you want to, <laughs> you don't want to break it either. How how are you dealing with that part of it? Is it is it quite easy and intuitive once you get the hang of it? Yeah, again, there's instructions on how to do it, um, and I would recommend reading them because there's certain bits you don't want to like the, the actual headset itself. You have yeah. like a band that goes around the top of your head, and then just below dropping that is your headset. Sure. You want to touch that as little as possible. So, so the main the bulk at the front, you don't want to be touching. You don't want to be pulling and yanking at that. You want to get the band, really. Yeah, yeah. The band has a button on it, and you can pull the band, and it ex- like it expands, and you sure. can take it easily on and off your head. But you don't want to be pulling from the headset because you'll you'll rip that off. <laughs> God, <laughs> imagine that day one. Yeah, yeah. Rip the, <laughs> rip the front visor off. So the gaffer tape around my head, sellotaping it to it to kind of get the experience. Yeah. So you've got it on your head, you've adjusted the band, and there's a little focus part, isn't it? So you can there's a little button underneath. Is that underneath the visor or the, the actual Yeah, band yeah, underneath and, the visor. So that's to and pull that, it close to your head to make sure that your your field of vision's fully covered, I assume. Yeah, that is, yeah. So it's depending on the shape of your head, you can sort of zoom it in and out and it just helps focus it. But um it's pretty it's, I mean there's two buttons on it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's that one and the one at the back. It ain't it ain't rocket science. You just don't want to be pulling it from the headset, that's all I'd say. That's interesting you say it's it, you know, it's the shape of your head, because yours is an odd shape. Does it does it work? <laughs> or... <laughs> it's not an odd shape. I've got a normal shaped head. For those that haven't seen him and you wouldn't have done, it is like a mashed potato head. So there's there's all sorts going on, isn't there? I, think. I would say when you say all sorts, I would. I mean, no, there isn't all sorts. It's just a normal head with normal eyes, two eyes, a nose, and a mouth, and no one would think any differently if they all, saw me. All I'm saying is the audience out. If you're worried about you've got a strange shaped head and it won't fit, if it fits him. I've seen it on him, so it'll fit you. So <laughs> that's the sort of. The, the, they should have put that on the front. Someone like you gone. Look, it'll fit his head. It'll fit you, and then do a little wink at the end of it. I so. can't believe they didn't. Well, it's lost money in it for Sony. I don't know what they're playing at really. You got it on. Is it comfortable or is it a little bit awkward? How do you feel? Is it heavy? Like, is your neck hurting? What's going on? It's, it's you know what? It's not. It's really it is very comfy. Um, right. You don't really notice you've got it on because if you did, it would ruin the illusion. You know, it's not. Hmm. Don't get me wrong. Like if someone walks into a room, they're not going to go, "What's he doing?" They're going to think he's got a virtual reality headset on his head. Right. Like it's it's bulky, but it, it's not heavy and it doesn't ever cumbers like feel cumbersome. Um, I would say it's, it's pretty good. They've done a good job of it. I think it's pretty good. Well, that's important, Riggs. Really, if you're going to spend up to, you know, you could spend a couple of hours in there. I don't think you'd want to spend too much longer in there, but people will. It needs to be comfortable. And, you know, I have been round there. You know, I came round on Friday and had a had a little play round with it, and it feels, it does feel fine. So that's an important thing to note because the comfort is is underlooked in some some areas. If, it, if it does, it's not comfortable to wear, you're not going to want it on for as long as probably what it should be um it's all on and now we can talk about some of the games that you've played and we'll as i said we'll get to the overall part towards the back end of it but let's just go through some of the game itself i mean they give you a playstation demo disc to start with and we'll come to that afterwards but that that didn't seem like it satisfied you enough because you went out and bought playstation worlds didn't you 
Yeah, I bought PlayStation Worlds. So PlayStation Worlds has, what is it, five games on it, or five experiences, whatever you want to call them. And that was, how much did you pay for that in the end? Is it twenty four ninety nine? Yeah, I paid twenty four ninety nine, but I would recommend shopping around because I got that from Argos, yep. and then I walked six foot down the road to game, and they were selling it for thirty eight for oh. exactly the same thing. But it wasn't even a disc; that was just a download. I actually got a disc, so something physical to hold in my hand for twenty five. So, yeah. for anyone that says game, don't try and rob you. There is truth <laughs> there. That is obscene to try and charge thirty eight, thirty nine quid for something that's going almost £15 cheaper down the road. It is, and the trouble is, Biff, you know that people, when they first get that, they'll do the same as you do. They'll get the demo disc, little Johnny will have it, for, and Mummy will have bought it for him, and little Johnny goes, oh, I want more, and she's like, oh, bloody hell, goes out. Where does she go? She goes straight to games, doesn't she, where she got the console from. Goes in there, picks up PlayStation Worlds, and then that's another 15 quid lost almost. Yeah, so shop around, people. Shop around, because you can get it for a little bit cheaper. Five games on there. Let's start with... The London Heist, which is something that you actually played at EGX, and this really seemed to be the thing that's, that planted this seed in your head. All is over a year ago now. Yeah. Over a year ago, and when you came back from EGX, you were so impressed with the London Heist that you said, "Look, I really am considering getting this VR malarkey." Um, talk to me about the London Heist. What is it? What do you do? And is it any good? London Heist basically um, is about a diamond heist. You have two motion controllers. Yep. And on your screen, when you move the motion controllers, two hands move. Okay. And you basically pick things up, not a lot of things, but you can pick a gun up, you can pick a magazine up, and you can put a magazine into the bottom of a gun and you shoot. So it's sort of like a, a 21st century time crisis in a way. Right, That's how yeah. I would sum it up. Yeah. Um, it is a very good game. The, the I mean... It, it is what it is. It's a very short game, you know. Right. I mean, you, you pay twenty five quid for five games. It ain't going to be the longest game in the world. It's a bit shorter than what I thought. I thought it might be an hour. It yeah. probably is only half hour, forty minutes long. That the game end to end. Right. Um, but it's very. It is. It's really good. Like I thought, the acting was very good in it. Um, the mm. pay the people move around. It's quite convincing. Mm. You know, um, the the actual when you have your hands when you see your hands it is so weird it yeah. really is really strange I mean you played it and yeah. you, I remember you going like wow like yeah, you were yeah. sort of gobsmacked by it yeah I mean I, they will come on to on, Into the Deep but I basically put the, this headset on my head and put me in this sort of very passive experience where you're in a cage and you go down and blah 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 and then you put the London Heist on where you have the two motion controllers you're holding them and you've got the triggers at the back and you use them to open and close your hands and as soon as that you, it puts you in that first situation where you can move your hands and pick things up, it immediately just is just like a wow factor. You can't describe it as anything else. It's it's really that is the that's the demo to show off to someone. You yeah, know, straight, yeah. If someone's a bit sceptical, you chuck them into some of the other ones where you don't do a lot or you haven't got much interactivity. They might go, I honestly don't know what they're talking about. But if you put them in the London Heist, that should convince most people that this is something very different and very good. Yeah, absolutely, and it. it like you say until you play it it's so hard because you just accept that those are your hands and yeah. when you drop something on the table so there's a pit where you have a cigar and a lighter yeah. and you drop the cigar but because you open you push a button to open your hand on the screen yeah. you drop the cigar and you nearly open your own hand because you yeah. just accept in your reality that that's your hands now it, it's, it's, it sounds stupid but it, it's so easily you're so easily convinced by it yeah you know but uh, I, I remember at that specific bit. I was basically it's, it's, that's one of the first bits. You kind of sit down at this table. There's a guy talking to you, and you can pick up a lighter and a cigar. And you're meant to light the cigar, and you can bring it to your mouth and take a, a toke of it. And I was actually I could feel my mouth as I was putting the cigar towards the mouth, sort of putting it out and pretending to do it as though it was there. Yeah, it's I really you in your mouth. I'm surprised, you didn't, surprised you didn't say what are you doing. There's no cigar, there, you prat. You've got a motion control in your hand. But it it was it was really it was really convincing. That's like one of the early bits you then come on to parts where you've actually got to do the shooting um how did you how did you find those bits do you think that's that's a well done piece of it i mean that is you know the part of the action in the game really isn't it the, there's two levels in that really yeah the, sh- the shooting is quite hard in a way because it's not like you can do accurate shooting because when you take a shot you don't know where you, your hands are in relation to the screen Mm. So you have to do it like a, an opening shot to find out where the bullet goes, and then you think, "Oh right, I'm a little bit off." Then shoot. Yeah. The, st- the setting we had it on, I actually found out later that if you put it on easier setting, there's a laser that comes out the bottom of your gun. Ah. Oh. 
Oh. And I thought it does. was on the easy setting. No, that was on the hard setting we had it on. Fucking hell, no one was dying. <laughs> yeah, so there's a laser. So that it makes it a bit, actually makes it a bit more fun when you have the laser because then you can actually start doing like, accurate shooting and bits like that. Yeah. I also, I also found on that game that after you left, once you've completed the game after half hour, there's a shooting range. There's like four different shooting ranges. All right. And you go into a garage and you can shoot. They throw tyres across, you shoot tyres. Yeah. And um, as I said before, you load the gun with your left with your, with your hand you're not shooting Yeah. you can actually on the shooting range dual wield the guns oh really you have a gun in each hand and then they stick two magazines sticking upright on the table and then you slam the guns down onto the magazines and that's how you load the guns there you go just another you know another angle to, to play but that, that's quite fun that's quite good that is yeah the London Heights is definitely one to if you're going to show this off put people on that because it will just it just encompasses the, the things that VR can do very well. Yeah. Um, some of the others that are not that aren't as interactive, although they're you know they're, they're great to look around in. When you start getting your hands on stuff and picking, like I was picking stuff and just throwing it, wasn't I? Throwing it yeah, at people yeah. and trying to do all sorts, do the wanker sign and all that. I was <laughs> giving it all that. Obviously, the comedian that I am. Um, but if we then move on to into the deep, which kind of puts you there's two modes in this isn't there? there's one that's like a shark dive and then you said there's like a wildlife safari I couldn't understand what that was what is Into the Deep exactly is it just two different modes that you can play so basically you're in a cage and you cannot move there's no interaction you can just move your head and look around you 360 degrees yeah so on the wildlife one um, you just get lowered again it's the same as what you did basically except there's no shark wow. as far as I can tell but I haven't I haven't really done that much of it Mm. Um, so there, there might be other stuff, but you, you you drop down in the deep. There's like manta rays, turtles, crabs, yeah. um, and your visor has a light on it. So when you move your head, the light shines, yeah. and there's like sea coral, and it interacts, so it opens and closes when the light gets shone on it. Yeah. And then the one you did has sort of a I don't know a bit of a story. There's people talking to you saying, oh, there's a submarine down there, and there's, there's nuclear weapons, and then there's a shark that attacks you. Yeah. Um, but again, that's, it's not really interactive. It's quite sort of boring after a while. But yeah. it's just a way to show off, you know, 360 degree. Like everywhere you look, there's something to look at, isn't there? Constantly. Yeah. Yeah. When the sharks swim around you, you can follow him all the way around if you've got the, the neck to do it or <laughs> if you want to actually get up and move move yourself. So that's, that's, that's one, yeah. That's like an early... You don't have to do anything, but it'll show off what the, what the headset can do in terms of what you can view. Yeah. VR Luge. Haven't seen this. I I think it's the one where you're actually on a luge board going down the road or down a hill essentially having to turn is that correct yeah that's basically it again there's very little interaction with this one it's it's not that good so I do, you thought to, it might... do you have to lay on the floor or how does it work so basically I thought that but no you, you sit down but there's a body laying down in front of you and your head is just on top of that him laying down and all you right. do to turn the board is just lean your head left or right, right and it see. turns the board. Um, yeah. But it's sort of, I don't know, it's not great. It's, I think there's like <laughs> one track, and it's one's at night, one's in the day, and then you do different sections of it. Right. And it's, it's pretty sort of dull, but again, it's one of those things. It's just basically this, this disc is not a game disc. It's the show-off disc. It's, you put it on with your friends, and you go, look, this is what it can do. Right. It's not actually, none of them are proper games, really. No. The closest one to a game is London Heist. And that's quite short, as we said. Yeah, very short. Danger Ball. Yep. What's that one? It's when you're heading the ball backwards and forwards, you're playing against the bot, aren't you? And you have to yeah. use your head to kind of... It's almost like a pong, but with your head in yeah, 3D. Yeah, basically, yeah. So you, you, your head controls a paddle, and you move your head left and right, and then... The, you hit a ball and then there's a computer on the other end and that hits the ball back yeah. to you and you have to try and outdo it. It's quite good, but it, again, you know, it's not a proper game. It wears thin after 10 minutes. You think, <laughs> well, I've done that. Started off so strongly and they're all getting getting slagged off now. I don't think it's going to get any better <laughs> with this final game. Scavenger's Odyssey. Now, this is like uh, you sit in a tank and it has legs and <laughs> you have a controller like you would normally. You yeah. move the sticks about and it moves the tank about. Right. But the problem with this game is I've found, we'll come on to the, the other demo disc later, mm. but there's like three or four games that are really similar to this. Like really similar. So you're just right. in a tank, in a machine that walks, and then yeah. you just move your controller to move around, and it has guns. It's Again, you know, you, you get in it, you look around, you think, oh, it looks pretty cool. And then after 
five minutes you think, right, I've done everything I'm going to do here. This, you know, you're literally stuck in this this tank <laughs> forever. But I played it for about half, about no, probably about ten minutes. Yeah, um, it's all right. Uh, the, the the good thing about it is you have to you can jump and it turns. You you sort of um, it's hard to explain. You you see like a level or you see something you're going to jump on and the the, the yeah. floor might be at an angle and you jump and then it turns you in midair. Oh. It sort of distorts your view of so you, at one point you'll be upside down. Yeah, so but, you can stick to like different surfaces yeah, yeah. essentially. Yeah, yeah. Like you could um, do, and I think in Dead Space in one of them you could like turn that, the gravity off and. That's exactly it. That's exactly what it's like. And you turn it and it distorts. It, it changes the room. Cool. Um, but it does sort of get quite. I don't know, a bit full on after a while. You're like bloody hell, I'm all over the place here. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it can make you feel a bit queasy. <laughs> So PlayStation VR demo. That's, that's PlayStation World's done. You know, that's your five games there. The standout, without a doubt, is the London Heist. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's the one that you, you want to be playing if you've got that. And then Into the Deep's a decent experience. And then they they tend they sound like they get worse as we go down the list. But yeah, yeah. There's, there's five there. Twenty five quid. As long as you don't go to game, you'd be livid if you. Would you be livid if you paid forty quid for that? If that was the only yeah, price. Yeah, yeah. You would. You'd hit the roof. You'd do hit the roof. You, do you think for twenty five, it's that's an acceptable price? Because one of the things we don't really know. This is a topic we'll have to come back to. I imagine later on down the line is how much should a VR game be priced? Because typically they're not the longest of games, are they? They are shorter no. experiences. Are you happy with the with the sort of twenty five for that 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 five set of games essentially? I mean, yeah, 20, 25 ain't, ain't too bad. You wouldn't want to pay a lot more than that. No. In fact, you wouldn't want to pay any more than that, absolutely. But, um, yeah, if you're, I mean, the, the thing is with that, I can I can take that back and sell that. That's right. how I see that. If, if I pay Physical 38 disc. quid for something that I can't, I can't I've got that, that's it now. That's, I've got a bit of paper with a code on it. You know, you yeah. can't do anything with that. That's why I can't understand why people would do that. But, you know, mm. different folks, different strokes. Yeah, I'll be honest, I, and this is, we're going to go a little bit of topic here. When I, I bought, Hitman, the season one kind of digital, um, because they they released it episodically, and at the moment there's no physical disc. The physical disc will come next year, with all six of the episodes on it plus everything else that's been added. But I wanted to play it kind of this year, so I bought it on digital, paid, I think it's forty quid, whatever it was, and I do have regrets already about getting it on digital because I haven't got a, I haven't got a physical piece of media, and I know that once I finished with it. It just goes into the deletion of my disc, and I'll never, I'll never see anything of it again. Yeah, it's, yeah. Um, in, in, I'm not, I'm not overly convinced about this digital malarkey. Although, if you're on PC, 98% of everything is digital, so maybe it's just a, a case of being trained into that method. But I've always been quite a heavy trader. Yeah, I have as well. But I think, yeah, I think we're getting off subject, aren't we? But yeah, I, I yeah, don't like it either. <laughs> yeah, no. PlayStation VR demos. That's what came with it, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So this is again a physical disc. disc, an actual disc of a real disc. That is very surprising in this day and age that they would waste money doing that. But there is what dozen maybe demos. I don't know. I'm taking a, a pluck at the air there. I don't know how many are actually there. Maybe less than that. Yeah, eight? seven, seven, seven or eight. I'd say yeah, something like that. Seven or eight, and these are basically very short experiences of games that you can buy elsewhere. Yeah, so they're usually one level, maybe. To, you don't get a lot of time in them but no. they, can't, they give you an idea of how, what the game is like and more importantly whether you're going to probably enjoy it or not which I think where we haven't got a demo disc these days we, we lose that you have to kind of take a gamble on things but we've got one called Riggs yeah. which you play as like a robotic sports game where you shoot and collect tokens you shoot other other robots it's a team game so there's two or three of you on a team you shoot other robots you click these tokens and then that that builds your kind of meter up when your meter gets to something called overdrive you then jump and go through a hoop and that scores you a goal and it's like that it's a bit of a weird weird you know conundrum going on there what do you think of rigs because a lot of people bigging this up in the preview event saying this is the one this is the one but from what from what we spoke about briefly yesterday offline, you wasn't overly impressed with Riggs. I don't think when I sat down and played it, I was either really. I thought it was crap. I thought it was crap. <laughs> I was just, you know, if, you know. He's thought, back. <laughs> negative Biff. We've got negative him. Negative Biff. It, it's just, you know, it, again, it's the same as what um, the other game I told you about. Where you sit in a robot, you know, Obviously. and you're <clears throat> using a controller, and it, it, you don't need you don't need VR to do that. Do you know what I mean? You could play that game. Yeah. Without a VR headset, couldn't you? Yeah. 
Uh, so I, I don't, I don't know why you'd, why you do that. It, it defeats the object of having a VR headset. And we, we, you know, we went online yesterday on PlayStation Store to see how much that was. That was fifty quid to download that. <laughs> that was, that was absurd. I couldn't believe that was fifty pounds. If anyone's paid for that, I feel so sorry for you. Because that is, that's, you've been, you've been, that's daylight robbery. That, you've been mugged. <laughs> oh dear. Drive Club VR. So Drive Club itself, awful launch but got better i've got i think i got it for 10 pounds in the end of the, of the season pass decent game now and actually evolution studios who did it have actually gone so i don't know how they've done this drive club vr i don't know who's done it but um this puts you this is one of the things that i said before vr arrived this is the one that will put you this will be the most immersive experience because it makes sense you're sitting down in a car you are static so you're on you're feeling like you're sitting down in your chair it doesn't matter you haven't got to move around yeah, having played it, it was good, but it made me feel a little bit queasy at points. <laughs> it's, how did you find Drive Club VR itself? Because it's it's quite impressive at first, but I got the feeling again that you wasn't overly impressed with it. I mean, it's like um, when you play a, a driving game and mm. you can change the view. So some people like to sit in the car, don't they, yeah. with that view? And some people like to see the car. Yeah. Um, it's the same view that you're sitting in the car and you're driving, but you Cockpit. can turn your head... Yeah, cockpit view, yeah. And you can, you can just turn your head left and right and have mm. a look out the windows either side and you can look behind you. Yeah. I mean, if you're racing, you don't want to be looking out the left and right windows or behind you. You want to be looking at the road ahead. So you don't really tend to do it that much. Um, and plus, <laughs> because you've got a controller, yeah, it doesn't... I don't know, like you said, I remember you can see your hands on the steering wheel and you said if you could turn the controller left and right, it would make it feel yeah. more natural. I think it would. It would make it sort of seem like you were striving the steering wheel. So it, I think it's a bit of a missed opportunity, but... Mm. Yeah, I got, I got a bit motion sickness with that one. That's what yeah. you know. That was pretty bad. That one. The same yeah. rigs that made me feel a bit queasy. Yeah, because it's just frantic. It, you know, it's a million miles an hour, and you're sitting there, but it's not. You know, you're, you're doing hundred miles an hour down some back street in France. Yeah, you're, not, you're sitting in your lounge in your pants. So no, you can put your yeah. It's well, I think if they. <clears throat> I don't know if they've got wheel support or if they add wheel support. It, if you plug an actual steering wheel in, that's the that's it. Then it's complete. Yeah, but yeah, again, that's really good. Then the trouble with that is, is then the when you when you turn the wheel, it has to be it will have to be one for one of what is going on the screen. Because if you say if you turn it ninety degrees and only moves forty five on the screen, that will immediately I feel break it because you'll feel like you've turned it further and it hasn't moved. Yeah. So maybe that's why they haven't done it because they've not figured out a way to do it. And let's be honest, on the PlayStation, there's not a massive crowd of people that use steering wheels. Typically, no. there yeah. is, but there's not as not as much say on a PC simulator or something like that. They've all got bloody setups with free screens and stuff going on. Yeah. So yeah. the crowd is probably more over there. I think people in general pick up pads and play on the console. There's obviously that's a, that's not a complete fact across the board. So it's 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 one of the first. Ones it'll be, it'll be the only one actually I think that's a drivable kind of VR experience on the PlayStation at least. But that's there if you if you ever wanted to have a go at that and it, it works relatively well. But yeah, it did make me feel a bit queasy as well. Wayward Sky, this was something that you said was something quite different. Explain to me what Wayward Sky is and why you feel like whether it's good or bad, whether it's why it's different. I, I liked it because it was one of the only. VR games that had done something completely different with it. So, right. again, it's motion controls, which is, I just think it's much better with motion controls than it is with a controller. Yeah. Um, you have like a, a bird's eye view of a little girl, and yeah. you click and point with your VR motion, con- your motion controller, sorry, and she'll walk over to something, and then okay. the screen angle will change, and then you'll have something in front of you. So, you'll have like a puzzle to solve and then you use your hands on again the same as in heist where you have two hands out in front of yeah. you and you can turn cogs and yeah. you can push buttons and it, it make and then once you've completed that little puzzle it zooms back out again and then you move her and then there'll be like robots running around and you have to make her run in a set order to get yeah. her down to the next bit and then there's another puzzle sure um, so it changes it, perspective it uses both kind of the point and click notion of the motion controls then when you get to an actual puzzle with her you go first person and get it gets use her hands yeah and it, it it just it was just something different it wasn't you sitting in another tank or another robot no. it was just something and they, you know it's just someone had looked at something a little bit different and i like yeah. i like that it was good it made like full good use of the vr yeah that's it does yeah it uses all, all the good things that are good about it and I, I did quite like that when i played it i thought that's that'd be a game that you could probably run through and have a good time with 
So Wayward Sky, one to look out for if you're interested in something a little bit, a little bit different. And that's what I remember a while back. You were saying that in terms of the games, it's going to be something that hasn't been done before that works. And yeah, absolutely, yeah, this I, is I you, believe that. This is kind of like a mashup of two things that don't typically happen, and it works well because you've got the hands-on approach and you've got the point and click, which works really well with a motion control because it's it's like using a mouse again. It's that intuitive. Yeah, you just, you just point it, bang, and, and she walks over there. Headmaster, absolute massive hype coming into this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's obviously a bit of I, uh, sarcasm there. You did not like this one one bit. I didn't even I mean, see it in action. I don't know what it is. This is that is the worst <laughs> VR head game I've played out of everything. Out of everything that there is, of all those seven games and the five, and I bought another one. This is garbage. It real, real garbage at the highest end. Do you know how much it is? Did you look at how much they were trying to charge? I think it? it's still sixteen pound to buy it. Right. And all you do is they throw a ball in the air. And you have to hit it into a goal. And you love football, right? But as someone who plays football, if you angle you don't your head, head no. I don't head it. No, no. you're right. <laughs> but if you angle your head to the right to head it right, yeah. the ball goes left. Okay. And it, it makes it doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense at all. Like I can guarantee. I mean, I'm just shooting from the hip here, but I bet you any money it was an American company that made this who had never played football because if you've ever picked up a ball and headed it, this is abs- if, 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 even if someone's thrown a ball at your face, this is nothing <laughs> like that. They literally have done no research. It is just the worst thing in the world. Oh no, headmaster gets absolutely slammed. If anyone's paid sixteen pound for that, that's more. That's worse than rigs. That is. Right. That is. So you'd rather pay the fifty pound for rigs than the sixteen or seventeen? I'd rather pay hundred pound for rigs than pay sixteen pound for that. That's how bad it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear battle zone what's this all about battle zone this is another one where you sit in a tank you look around the tank tank you, sitting simulator basically yeah um and you move the controller about and you shoot but out of all the the tank simulator games this one was the best right so okay. it is it's the best one to play if you're gonna if you like a tank simulator i would recommend this one <laughs> it's just uh it's just a bit more fun than it it, it it looks very good inside the tank um, and it, I can't really explain it, but it's just that's the best out of the tank simulators. So what are you doing with that? Are you shooting other tanks? Are you aiming your you use your head just to move the turret, or that's, how do you? How does it work? Yeah, but I think you do move your head to move the turret, um, and then you just move the sticks to move the tank, and then you have like shoot, and then you can change the weapon over. And it's different. There's like towers that shoot you, tanks that shoot you, right. planes that shoot you. And you they're like. Your one seems really realistic, but those ones are like computer generated. So they look like oh. I don't know something out of the I don't know like the Matrix. It's like digital. It's not like a proper tank. It's like a uh, not Matrix. What am I talking about? Tron. It looks like something out of Tron. If that right, makes sense. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. like a, a luminous tank with lines all over it. That's sort of how it looks. But it, it, it plays quite well, and that's the best out of the tank simulators. So there you go. If you want a tank simulator, Battle Zone's your one for that. <laughs> Eve Valkyrie Space flight simulator type thingy jig shooting things isn't it essentially yeah. this is there's like, a lot of coverage on this one as well a lot of people saying this is this is really good but again crap um, really yeah mm. it's you're like in a plane in like a, a star fighter but it's like another tank simulator so you just <laughs> you know you're sat in a sat in a machine you're flying about again you start doing loop to loop oh my god you you feel so ill it oh, really? really turns your stomach yeah and yeah. every again everything's happening too fast too quickly <laughs> I don't know if it's me just being old, but it, you know that one really turned. That one, that was quite bad. That one. Put your old man in and see if he is sick. You chuck up all over the lounge, I reckon. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, just that's, that's PlayStation. That's, that's, I don't know if that's all the demos, but that's the ones that we played and you played. Um, before we close down about PlayStation VR demos, uh, I, while she was talking there, I was listening, but I was doing a bit of research. Um, Frame Interactive developed Headmaster. Right. Okay. And you said that you, you bet any money, you didn't know any facts that they're, they're from America. Here's a little blurb about Frame Interactive. Frame Interactive is an independent game studio whose main office is in Burlington, Vermont, USA. Our first game is Headmaster, a Sony backed VR title that's exclusive to PlayStation VR. Well, so that you were you spot on there. They're from America and they had no clue what it's like to head a ball. So well done. Anyone that questions Biff firing from the hip should immediately uh, be killed, really, because he's got it right spot on. American firm doing football heading. P. 
PSVR room. That's like a little separate type thing. And anyone that's... What that is it actually called? I can't remember what the actual room's called. Because I've got a version of this downloaded on my thing. And it uses the camera and puts those little robot shits in your front room. And you can kick them and stuff. But um, this is essentially like Sony's own little a suite of different experiences and games. Uh, we played one, which we can't remember the name of. I'm not even sure if it had a name. Um, but it was... Uh, the way you described it was kind of like... Almost like a, a 3D Super Mario, really, but you're using some VR mechanics, aren't you? Yeah, I, I quite liked it. I thought it was good. I mean, it was free as well. Um, yeah. And there's, I think there's about four or five games on it, and they range from, like, one player. So that one we played yesterday was actually two player. that like I could jump on and just play on the screen while you were on VR. Yeah. But we got a bit confused, and we didn't do it in the end. And there's, like, right. two to eight player games on it. I don't know how they work. I haven't had a go at them. I've only had it, you know, for two days, so I've not... You know, covered all bases here. Great review, yeah. but wow. um, <laughs> it, it, it's pretty good. I was quite impressed with it. Yeah. What what sort of things did you like about that in particular? Because it's I I played it. The playroom. That's it. Playroom. Yeah. It's called it, the yeah. playroom, and it's the VR version of that. I had to find that out because it's really annoying me. Um, and those that have got a camera will probably know that's one of the first things it tries to make you install is that. Um, but yeah, like, like you said, you kind of you're, you're over the shoulder, well, not over the shoulder. You're behind and a little bit above the little little robot man, and you use the normal controller as like you would normally. So you yeah. like jump in and, and puzzle solving and hitting things. But you think like some, something like this could work if they fleshed it out a little bit, or because well, I felt a little bit rough after playing this one. I must admit that one is the one that's. I don't know what it is hmm. about that game, but that made me feel really rough as well. Like that's the worst game. But I don't know right. why, because you, you're not moving fast. You're in control. Yeah. But there's just something about it that made me feel prop. But the only thing I would say is it was one of the last games you played, and you had been playing for about an hour and a half. Yeah. It was one of the last games I played, and I've been playing for about an hour and a half. So I don't know if after an hour and a half, it you start better. to yeah, you start to get the headaches and that. Yeah. yeah, it could be that. I mean, like we said, it's, I don't, we'll, we'll come on to sort of how we think this will be used later. But you know, I don't. You're not going to be doing. I done four hours on Mafia yesterday. I don't yeah, see if you, that, that happening. No, nah, you ain't been doing that on a VR red set. If you are, then congratulations, but yeah. I won't be. <laughs> Let's get to the main event, because this is the last game on the list, unless there's anything else you want to cover. But I think we've covered off all the, all the main ones, but you, you're a big Batman fan. Yes. You love the Arkham series. They then now release Batman Arkham VR. You went out and bought this code yeah. disc code. Yeah, this this was a code. This was a code. This was yeah. a code. So this is money gone. How much was this? Sixteen pounds. Sixteen pounds for Batman VR, Arkham VR. Sorry. Tell me about this because you after I'd gone home yesterday, you said I wish you'd played this one and reeled off some great stuff about. It. Let's hear it here on the podcast and why you was that impressive. Our uh, Batman Arkham VR. I mean, this is the sort of thing. If you think you're going to be Batman, you're going to be running around punching the shit out of people. It's not like that, so you have to forget that immediately. Right. But you basically, it, it just puts VR to real good use. It's so clever, and it, yeah. it, it's again, it's a very short game. You're only looking at like 40 minutes, half hour. Right. Um, there's a bit more playability to it. You can go back and do some other bits and change yeah. bits, but it just puts VR to such good use. So again, you have your hands out in front of you. Yeah. Um, you look down and you have a belt on the you right see the belt you see the belt see the, the legs right. no you don't see the legs you don't see anything like that you can, but right. you can see your belt right. on the front of your belt you have a batarang on the right of your belt you have a grapnel gun and on the left of your belt you have a forensic scanner and you can yeah. use your hand to pick it up and use it at any point during the game you can throw a batarang you can <laughs> shoot the grapnel gun you can scan everything in the game forensically yeah. and it's just it's really good fun and if you've ever played the Batman Arkham games, yeah. there's bit there's you know I'll go into, I won't go into too much detail, but the, you have to scan bodies. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you usually you come into a morgue and you're trying to track down something, so you get your forensic scanner out, and again you can see your hand and you're scanning the body, and then right. looking for clues on it, and then you find. You the clue. use your hand to scan over. You don't just press a button. You have to use the scan parts of the body. Yeah, you, you're you, like doing it over the head. And you you're do like, it over oh, the head. Oh, and then nice. you, you choose where to do it, and yeah. then. You're, again, you're interacting. So you walk into the morgue. You have to find um, a code to get uh, into a safe, so you can yeah. get a key to open up the morgue. So yeah. then you're using the forensic scanner to check the fingerprints. You hit the fingerprints. You see the fingerprints on the on the safe. So then you know what right. the code is. And it's just it's just really really good into put you uh, 
put to good use. Yeah. There's another bit where you have um, you can like go into a back computer, and then there's um, Riddler's sort of uh, I don't know what you'd call it memorabilia in there, and yeah. it's all broken up. And you pick up the parts of your hand and you put them together like a jigsaw, like a three-dimensional right. jigsaw. Yeah. And but they only fit a certain way. And you can put it in midair and then open it up. And then it, it, it's it's so cleverly done, really clever. And if you if you're a fan of Arkham, it's really good as well because there's a lot of like little uh, bits to it. And it, it's quite jumpy. And right. yeah. it, you know, it's just it's got everything. It ticks all the boxes. It really does. How do you move around in it? Um, you basically you look left and right and there'll be a prompt on screen and you'll push right. a button on the motion controller and it'll go from one side to the other. Oh, I see, I see. And when you're in the back cave, like there'll an old be adventure game. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it'll it'll just move automatically when you push the button. But in the back cave, there's like grapnel hooks. All right. So it'll say, do you want to go to the back computer? And then you, if you do want to, you shoot the grapnel hook and you'll grapnel over there. And if you want to go back, you shoot back. And if you want to go and see the cars or the vehicles, you shoot over to the vehicle area. And you yeah. can move around. You move around that way using the grapnel gun. Yeah. That made you feel sick when you did the grapnel gun. But it was no, like, no, fine. that was it. Was fine. But again, I, I, I had like a good few hours rest. Put it in, yeah. played it, and then shut it down again. So I don't know if it's. You know, if you're in it for a long time, it makes you feel ill. You actually can... You stand up and play it. You don't sit down. Oh, right. And you can actually walk. You can actually move forward and backward. Not far. Probably only a yard each way. Yeah. And uh, you can walk forwards and backwards to get into drawers and things like that. And you, I hit my uh, chandelier in my lounge <laughs> in my hands because I put my hand up to shoot the thing and I smashed it. I was like, fucking hell. I dropped the controller and everything. Oh, my God. So I, 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 how does, does the camera still track properly or... Yeah, yeah, it still tracks you, yeah, but you have to be... There's a bit on it where, you, you know when um, you played before and it will say, put your head in this little square? Yeah. It actually gives you a, a circle on the floor and it says, stand in the back symbol. And you have to stand oh. there so, and you can move around in this... It's about a metre squared. So you've got this whole metre squared to play around with. That's quite good. Yeah, but... That's quite cool. My lounge, I didn't realise it and then I've got, I'm fucking backed up against the sofa. I've got... A, that big square cushion thing I was kicking that I was oh, it ruined it a little bit for me because my lounge is not set up for it because I can't get any closer to the telly because if no. I fucking lift my arm up I'll knock the TV over I'll be in with all the wires <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I didn't know that that's quite cool yeah I forgot I totally fucking forgot to mention it but yeah you can, you've got like a little bit of wiggle room you can move around with about a yard on either side of the yard but that, that was the best thing I've seen it was absolutely fantastic it was better than the heists Batman was that, wow. If I was going to recommend something to get for 16 quid, that is the way to show it off. So would you... Yeah, so this is the question. This, it's not a world that many people live in, but they only want to buy one of them, PlayStation Worlds or Batman Arkham VR. What do they go for? I would go Batman Arkham. Cheaper and more Cheaper. Of a, and a stronger experience by the sounds of things. Yeah, absolutely. Even if you don't like Batman, you'll still, be, you'll still think it's good. You'll still think it's cool, I guarantee it. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. If there was no Batman skin on this... So that was just random. I yeah, don't know, if, if they just said, or something. yeah, if you're a detective of a, uh, you know, a throwing a, a ninja star around, this would still be the best game. Batman or no Batman, this is still the best game. Batman Arkham VR recommended from Biff. That is the the end of the gaming section. So we've gone through quite a few bits and bobs there. Um, let's have a look at this overall now. So I mean, the question is, <clears throat> it's very early on. Obviously, you've had it three, four days, but. Are you happy with it at this early stage? Because, you know, people will go, oh, 470 quid. Oh. Are you happy of, of, of getting this? Do you feel like it was a, a worthwhile purchase? Because it's not, it's not even mince our words. Here. I felt like there was, a, there was a point where you were getting really fed up with gaming in general because there's nothing new coming out. The, the big games, apart from maybe Uncharted, have been a letdown. No Man's Sky, all that sort of business. It really felt like it was grinding on you and you needed something new and fresh. So does this provide that? Yeah, it does. It does. It, I, I am chuffed with it. I know it's a lot of money, and I saw Piper put on a group yesterday. Is it is it worth the money? Yeah. That's time will tell that. You know, I, I won't right. know if it's worth. You know, if they bring out three or four games that are fantastic, yeah. then it, it's up there with the PlayStation already because there's not that many fantastic games on the PS4, really, is there? No. You know, so you could say is the PlayStation worth the money? It depends yeah. what you're into, but. I, I, I'm I'm happy with it, um, yep. and I think it does a good job. And it's just bringing virtual reality to everybody. It's making it easily accessible. Is it the best, most crisp picture in the world? No, my TV 
has a better picture than what my VR headset sure. does. But yeah. it's not about. We said that when we played it that when you're playing the game, you don't really notice it as much. No, it's only when you're watching. Like we watched a little movie on it, didn't we? And it, yeah. it looks it looked really poor, really ropey because it wasn't in HD. But yeah. in the game, in when you're playing a game, it don't look too bad, and, and it, it does it does the job well. Yeah, no, you soon forget about any of the you know resolution stuff once you've got the headset on and you're doing you, you're not really concentrating that you're concentrating on fucking trying to throw something at someone or shoot someone it's like it yeah takes your attention away of it immediately and you feel like you, you're there what are the what are the good points about this then essentially if you could sum up a, f- a few bits that about it that you you think are good whether it's the game whether it's the experience or whether it's the headset itself what in, in itself would be i just i just good I just think it'll be a different way to play games and I've seen it in touches with that way with Sky with Heists with Batman it's just a a, you know if you're going to put a first person shooter on it or you know like a um, I've forgotten what it's called now that Riggs Riggs that's it Yeah. you know it's pointless because you don't need a VR headset to play that game so I don't see why you do that I wouldn't recommend putting Call of Duty on it it doesn't you know, you, you want to make something different for it. And with yeah. Batman Arkham, that's what I saw. I saw something different, a new type of game coming out. And that's what yeah. I quite liked. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's yeah, one way of doing it. Is there anything about it that you're not too happy with or that you wasn't as impressed with? I mean, you mentioned the 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 screen or the, the, the display on it isn't as crisp as perhaps what you'd like. Is that probably... Is there anything else other than that that you might look it, at and think, they could have changed this or um, that better? I don't think all wireless. I mean, that's we're dreaming it wireless yeah, at the moment. Yeah, wireless is a dream. I mean, the, the wire is a bit annoying sometimes because it does sort of ruin the illusion. It because tracks you, down your shoulder, didn't it? Yeah, <laughs> and then you move left and right, and you think, oh, it's, and then you have to move the wire from over yeah. your shoulder to under your shoulder. So that's, you know, I think that's limited by the technology we have at the moment. Um, yeah. But that can sort of ruin the illusion. It doesn't feel like. I would say that it's not the most. Hard cut. Like if I dropped it, I'd be like, "Shit, it's fucked." You know, I, I wouldn't. Right, it's not robust. It's not going to. Yeah, yeah. Beating. You need to be sort of gentle with it and sort of respect it a bit. You're not going to yeah. sort of. You're not going to put it, chuck it in a bag and take it to your mate's house. You'd you'd want to carry it in a bloody, you know, a, a silk lined box or something just yeah. to make sure it's okay. But <laughs> again, I think that's because of, you know, it's it's that much money as well. But you know, it, it's good on the whole. It, it's it's very good. I'm very impressed with it, and I'm glad. I'm glad I bought it. Yeah. Well, you were you were worrying that when I was chucking things. In that way, with Sky opening down, you can pick up balls and stuff. And I was throwing stuff at a chicken. He was worried that I was going to let go of the motion control and just chuck it at his mirror. Yeah, that's why I was, I was more worried about the mirror than the motion controller. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about motion sickness. We mentioned it in a couple of games. In general, I think there is. It's the type of game that does it. The actual headset, I think, won't factor into that too much. It'll just be perhaps a style of game. But are you, are you at all concerned that? you might put on some experiences and and then start feeling rough and think I have to turn that off yeah that does worry me slightly but I do sort of think that it it is dependent on how long you play it so I find that when I'm on it for a long time so if I've done an hour and a half two hours at the end of it I'm like I feel groggy I'm like oh god so I think you have to. It's taxing of... on you, isn't it? It's a taxing experience because you're, all your senses are, are engaged. Yeah, yeah, it, it, you yeah are... that's right. You are. They are. They all firing. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I think the only games really I, I felt like was the the the, the, um, the playroom part, and that the times I felt ill on that is when I was pushing the character forward quite fast, so I was moving and not taking my time. Yeah. Uh, rigs. That was a bit of a stomach churner, yeah, and the drive is. club at certain points on the track doing a chicane, for example, felt a bit off. But you know, the other stuff didn't feel anything for. So London Highs, Into the Deep, uh, Wayward Sky, they were all all fine. So I think that'll that'll get better with how the games are developed. Um, I'm worried about uh, the Resident Evil game that's going to be VR, PlayStation VR. Um, for a year I think on its own because that's one where you're moving the character of the stick still I've said it last week or the week before last maybe I think that might be a bit of a a real sick note for some people if they put it in that but we'll, we'll see it might it might not be what do you want to see in the future for PlayStation VR in terms of software support do you want games made better by VR so stuff we've already got or are you more interested in something that's going to you know, you mentioned a first-person shooter. What's the point doing it? Would you prefer something that's different, maybe like a, a Wayward Sky where it's meshing two bits together, or what are you, what are you looking for? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, if they make, I mean, there's a, there's a game coming out. I was telling you, I think it's called Farpoint. Yeah. Um, and that's going to be a first-person shooter, and that you actually get a gun that you can put your motion controllers into. Like a I light mean, gun, isn't it? You just plug it yeah. in and it, you hold it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know if that will be any good or not. I'll probably, I'll probably get it and have a crack. But yeah. if it, you know, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I, I do think that I want something that's different. Just you know, like how Batman was made. Yeah. It's nothing. The gameplay is absolutely nothing like you play Batman. You, you know, you're not running around. You're not controlling Batman. You are Batman, and you, you're doing things in a scene scenario. So you, yeah. you're walking around a room, and you know that that's it's, that's what I want. You know, games because if they don't, if they don't sort of make the games for it, mm-hmm. Logan, Logan's right. It will be like a, a connect where you're just like if they just yeah. churn out the same thing, then yeah. you know they need to start thinking what could we do with this because it's it's a clever piece of kit and. You know, I, I played heists, and heists is only like half hour long, but I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and it's really yeah. good. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, I just hope that they, they give the games to do it justice, because if they don't, it will be like another Connect, and it, it will be a flop. Yeah. So how many how many games do you feel like you would need on a regular basis? You know, what sort of... I mean, how many a year? I mean, what would you... Because we, talk about, we talked about yesterday about how you'd play it for... You'd probably do. You want to do two hours a day max, wouldn't you, on this theme? Because it is quite taxing on your on your senses. So, is there a need for them to have as quite like a heavy schedule of what you've got of normal games? They, they stuff coming out every other week, or would you be happy with like a once a month, once every two months? What sort of? It's, it's a difficult question to answer because you don't know how much you actually want to play it. But yeah, my, yeah. my assumption is you don't want to sit there for eight hours playing it, like no, for one day. So, I, don't, I mean, you might you might find a game where it, it doesn't tax you as much and you might be all right but uh, you might need to just get used to it i don't know what it is because it's a new experience i've never done anything like it before and after yeah. i played it had it a month i might think oh you know i can sit down and play it for three or four hours at a time no worries yeah. but um you know and it, it's again it's time will tell but yeah i mean because it's like an add-on for a playstation it, it doesn't really matter how many games they bring out as long as they're bringing out games so if they bring out 10 or 12 games this year you know next year for it yeah. it's all right because you've still got your playstation so you've still got you yeah, know, other games coming out. You've got, you know, your Horizon and uh, Resident Evil and things like that. So as long as there's, you know, things to play, and it's good because now I've got it's like having two different consoles, you know. So I've got yeah. two different lots of games coming out. So it's increased me sort of Horizon a little bit. Yeah, you certainly got more options as to what. Yeah, yeah. You would, have, you would have typically had, and you know, I can't remember the exact figures, but Sony were spouting off some numbers about. Uh, how many games is going to be on PlayStation VR? And it sounded like quite a lot. Okay, some of them might be not the quite best. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the trouble. Um, is it, there is going to be that period, isn't there, where people are going to have to either take a gamble or, or do a bit of research on games because there's going to be a lot of tat out there early on that's I just think, trying to trying to get in on the, the VR hype. I think I think people will have to do their research because I think there will be a lot of, a lot of tat, a lot of yeah. crap out there. That's the, that's the trouble with it. PlayStation Pro comes out in November. Could be potentially more outlay. Are you, what, where are you standing with this? Do you think it'll, it'll, if it adds to your VR experience, make things crisper, or probably what makes things crisper, but I don't know, makes things a little bit more smoother. Do you think you're going to get a PlayStation Pro? Um, I don't know. I mean, I told you, told you this the other day that I've got an Apple Watch. Um, yeah. I'm selling it because I don't really use it that much. Yeah. Um, so I think I'm getting a couple of hundred quid for it, so I could put that towards getting a PS Pro, but I'm not really that fast. It doesn't really bother me. I'm not seeing anything that's making me, because they're saying it's not broadcasting 4K. I haven't even got a 4K TV anyway. No. I don't really see what it's bringing to the party, I must no. admit. If they said to you it's going to enhance your VR experience in some way, I don't know how, would that be, now that you've got one, would you be tempted by just that? I don't know. I'd need to see a vast improvement because at the moment I'm playing it and I'm not really bothered by. Yeah, yeah, I'm not bothered by it. it. I'm not looking at it thinking, "Oh, it looks crap." I'm looking at it thinking it looks really good. So yeah. it'd have to look very good for me to fork out an extra three hundred and fifty quid or whatever it is. I think that's how much it is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it will be along, yeah, so, along those lines. If you think you, you know, by the time you bought the headset for four seventy and the controllers, you pay three fifty. You're looking at eight. You're getting towards a thousand pound now by the time you bought a controller and a couple of games, isn't you? Yeah, it's getting yeah. out of hands, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> who would you who would you recommend the PlayStation VR to? Is it is it it's not is it for everyone or is it for a certain audience or how 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 would you 
you know, someone's on the fence, they go, I don't know if I'd enjoy this. Who, what type of person would benefit from the PlayStation VR? Uh, not too sure, really. I mean, I think it's quite a casual thing. Um, I right. think it could be quite a social thing as well, even if you've got people around, because yeah. you can watch them playing it on screen. So, it, you know, it's quite good. Um, but uh, I've got people coming around tonight, you're one of them, to come and have right. a go. So we'll find out how social it is we might just end up in an argument you might throw it against the wall and then I never talk yeah. to you again we'll find out tonight we will but um, yeah <laughs> I, I think uh, it's sort of I don't think it's going to be for hardcore gamers you know what I mean I don't think no. I don't think it's going to be for people that want AAA titles because I don't think it will be that sort of thing but if you're looking for something new like yeah. you know like you said I was just a bit despondent with games but it sort of re-piqued my interest in it sort of thing yeah would you, if someone, if someone had budget for buying five games next year, and let's just say like Horizon, Mass Effect, two others or three others, sorry, or they could go and pick this up and get a couple of games for it, and maybe a two or three next year, what, what would you advise they do? Do they stick with what they know, or do they take the gamble and go right? I can't play Horizon next year, but I'll be able to play something in VR, but we don't know what. Yeah, I mean that's. that's sort of a hard question to answer that's why I bloody asked it didn't I <laughs> it depends what that person wants you know I mean I just wanted something different that's why I bought it you haven't bought it I don't know if yeah. you want something different I don't know if it's impression I, I mean have you thought about buying one now you've uh, played it have you thought this could be for me or do you need a little bit more games coming out I need a few more games yeah I think that's what it comes down to to me the fact is that you've made it easy for me to come around and play means my reason for getting one is now diminished like if I <laughs> if, like, if, no, if no one else had it then and I'd played it somewhere and I thought that's really like I don't know it'd been tougher to turn down um, but I haven't even you know I haven't even got my living space set up for my games yet where yeah, I am yeah. new currently so once that's sorted maybe I'll I'll look at it but yeah it's, it, I'd need a few more games I think that's what it'll always come down to um, I, I respect your decision to get one early doors because not a lot of people have the stones to adopt something that's completely new like this early and everyone wants everyone who hasn't got one usually wants to dance on its grave and go oh shit it's not as good as the Vive it's not as good as the, the Oculus and they go well you're not paying as much but for something that plugs into a PlayStation 4 which in terms of its power is low compared to a high end PC I think what you've got there is a great bit of kit yeah it's um it really is and you know it's the same thing isn't it gaming is it can be as expensive or as cheap as you like depending on how much you want to commit to it if you've got a bit of money and it's not going to you're not going to miss that money if you're not going to miss the the 300 or the 400 pound if you want the motion controls with it then absolutely get it but if you're going to buy it and feel guilty about it then you'd have to question whether you bother with it to be honest yeah it's uh, I guess it comes down to people's preference but if you don't feel like you'll miss the money absolutely go and sting it yeah but, um I think that's one way to wrap up PlayStation VR. Now, I was going to talk about Bioshock the Collection, but I think we've run out of time, really. We can save that for another time, once you've maybe finished three as well. Yeah, We'll get you back on yet. that. Uh, but you've done one on two and was impressed with it. So we will do next week's releases and let everyone else get on with their lives, including you. Sounds like it's getting busy over there. Um, no releases until Friday the 21st of October next week. Battlefield 1, Xbox One, PS4, PC. Civilization 6, PC. So the Webmaster Chappers looks like he's going to be getting that one. Riven Paradise Mega Mix 3DS. Super Dimension, Neptune vs. Sega Hard Girls on PS4. <laughs> classic. <laughs> hey, he's a classic, isn't it? Warhammer 40k, Death Watch PS4. Tokyo Twilight Ghost Hunters, Daybreak Special Gigs, PS3, PS4, PlayStation Vita. Batman Return to Arkham Biff, Xbox One, PS4, the game that was delayed indefinitely finally gets a release date. Having yeah. played the VR version of Arkham, is there any hope for that now? Um, yeah, I mean, that, that could be that could be being bought. I mean, it feels like I'm back a year ago. I remember moaning a year ago that all they're doing was reselling me old games already had. And they, we just spoke about Bioshock and Batman, haven't we? Yeah. And Skyrim's coming out soon as well. So Yeah, Skyrim's you know, coming out in a couple of weeks, yeah. I still think we're back a year ago, but there we go. The remasters will keep coming if people keep buying them. That's the problem with those. Guilty. Final one, yeah, well, that's what it's, it, I, I moan about it until it's a game I want, and I'm like, oh, that's the best <laughs> thing I've done. So, all right. Lego Harry Potter collection on PS4. So, if you want a Harry Potter fix or a Lego fix. Is that another remaster? 
Yeah, it will be. It'll be all the Harry Potters, though, rolled into... All the Lego Harry Potters rolled into one collection. So however many they did, I don't know, seven or whatever, it'll be one package. So a little bit different, but still a remaster, technically, if you if you look at it that way. If you've already bought the games, I don't think you're going to be out getting anything else, really. But I think that's it. If anyone else wants to get in contact with us or, or see what we're doing in the weeks whilst we're not recording this podcast head over to dimpdigital.com for written audio and video content that's it for now though game over it's goodbye from biff goodbye it's goodbye from me apps thanks for your time and ta-da